All right, hello, how's it going everybody? This is Dan Callahan, the host of Callahan's Corner Reviews. We got another episode already, look at that. Um, this is the second, the second review in the Harry Potter series. Uh, I know I'm like a two days behind. I was supposed to do this, give us up on Saturday. I waited till today because, you know, happy Labor Day. Am I right? Am I right? All right. So, uh, a little exhausted. I've, I've had a very long week, very exciting week. Um, you know, it took me like almost the whole week, the whole week uh, to finish the Chamber of Secrets because this movie is just so fucking long. Um, <laughs> um, going into this movie, if you've never seen The Chamber of Secrets, this is actually the longest Harry Potter movie. But is it worth it? Is it worth sitting on your couch for two hours and 45 minutes? Or could you spend your time doing something a lot better? Well, let's find out. This is a review of Harry Potter and The Chamber of Secrets. So, oh, Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets, it's the second Harry Potter book. It's also the second Harry Potter movie, obviously. Um, this one, we get all of our characters returning back. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Hagrid, uh, Snape, um, the ones that were pretty prominent in the last movie, while we also get introduced to new characters, new locations, new places, uh, so be it. So basically, the plot of uh, Chamber of Secrets is that there's this <laughs> secret chamber Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> There's a secret chamber in the school that has a huge monster in it. And basically, um, the chamber was built by one of the four founders of Hogwarts, Savazar Slytherin. Um, so in case you didn't know this, every Hogwarts is made up of like four houses or whatever. And like the students get sorted into those houses. It's like basically they represent that branch of the school, if that makes sense. I mean, it's all under one school but they live in like the dorms that are connected to the house. It's kind of like Olsen Hall would be like Gryffindor. You know what I mean? Like if you're staying on the dorms or something like that, you kind of get my point. So there's Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Huff Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. Harry and friends are in, you know, Gryffindor. Uh, Malfoy and friends are in Slytherin. Slytherin's kind of where all the assholes go. Um, that was our Slytherin uh, basically created the secret chamber in Hogwarts that he only has access to and his hairs would have access to like people in his bloodline obviously and uh, there's a monster hidden in the chamber of secrets and if you open the chamber the monster comes out and kills um basically all the um half borns or like the mud bloods which we learn what that means basically there's uh different kinds of wizards in this world you know there's the pure bloods where both parents were wizards and then there's the mud bloods where it's like muggle parents gave birth to a wizard uh, basically the case with Hermione, which we found that out in this movie. I believe we did not learn that in the first movie, but if we did, somebody can put that in the comments and just be a smart ass. Basically, what happens here is someone has opened the Chamber of Secrets and there's some weird shit going on. There's writing on the walls, writing in blood on the walls. There's people getting petrified, like left, right, you know, central, wherever. They're just getting petrified all over the place. Um, from cats to ghosts to just students walking around the hall to people taking photos. They're getting petrified. And so this movie's just a gigantic mystery. The whole thing is like, what is the monster? Who's the hair slivering? Where's the Chamber of Secrets? Like there's a bunch of things going on here. Uh, we get introduced to, you know, the Tom Riddle character. We get introduced to Dobby, cause Dobby is just kind of an idiot in this movie. More on that in a second. But uh, yeah, this movie's just a gigantic plot to figure out who's trying to, get the school to be basically shut down um so honestly the chamber of secrets um this is a weird one for me because when i was a kid this used to be my least favorite harry potter movie like not gonna lie i had a lot of friends that actually really enjoyed the chamber of secrets um i always found this movie just really boring <laughs> especially when i was a kid um because it's just so long um, I mean, this is, like I said, the longest Harry Potter movie and they really stretch it out. Like, um, and that was, that's pretty much my biggest critique with Christopher Columbus, who's the director of not just this movie, but also the first Harry Potter movie is he didn't really know what to keep in and what to keep out. Um, 
and that really shows in the first two movies because the first two movies are very lengthy and they're the two shortest books so that doesn't really make a lot of sense it's like you didn't need to include everything i mean i can kind of understand for the first movie because the first movie it's like world building and they do a really good job in the book of doing that but the second movie i mean there's a lot of stuff that's cool in the book but they probably could have cut out i feel like a little bit of a movie for i mean but then you kind of look back and you're like well that sequence was kind of cool um like for instance i was thinking about it after i saw the movie there's a sequence when harry um he's like transporting somewhere through the flu network which is like through the fire pit or whatever like there's this cool magic they get powder and they like throw it down and they say like where they're going and instead of saying diagon alley he says diagonally so he like ends up in like the um bizarro world of Di diagon alley you know like the dark part of diagon it's just alley. this long sequence it's basically um draco malfoy's father's introduction into the movie and you get to see oh he's kind of smug like it's kind of a cool scene but again, it could have just, they could have cut that whole part out of a movie. That's like 10 minutes of a the movie they could have just cut out. And they could have just jumped to Harry Goes to Di Diagon Alley. And then he runs into Mr. Malfoy anyway in Diagon Alley. And that was a cool introduction anyway to Mr. Malfoy's character. Let's just, let's talk about that for a second. Drago Malfoy and his dad in this movie, total assholes. <laughs> like, they are, um, I think they do a really good job of like making Draco even more unlikable in this movie than they did in the last movie. Um, they actually do a pretty good job of that in the first uh, three movies of making Malfoy really not likable. Um, I think they kind of lose the momentum with that as the series progresses and as they get older. But especially in the first three movies, and it's especially this movie, I think Draco is really a huge douchebag in this movie. Because the first movie, he's kind of a douchebag, but you don't really like really despise him as much as like the Dudley or the Dursleys like Dudley and Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vermin which are assholes in this movie as well um but Draco is just way worse in this movie like he like really says some sh fucked up shit in this movie <laughs> like in, in terms of like wizarding jargon um and then his father is just um, I, I could see where some people might think his dad is kind of overkill in this movie, but I think he's a pretty nasty character in this movie. He's a huge douchebag as well. Dobby is introduced in this movie. Dobby ends up becoming one of the more likable Harry Potter characters, and he was always kind of likable and kind of funny. But this movie, he just does a lot of stuff that's just, like, idiotic. Like, he's he knows about the scheme to open the Chamber of Secrets, basically, um, from the get-go. And that's revealed at the end of the movie, like, how he knows that. Um, but he's, he does everything in his power to make Harry Potter, like, not go back to Hogwarts, like, at the beginning of the movie, like, he prevents Harry from getting on the train, he prevents Harry, I mean, you know, he just does certain things, I don't really, like, again, like, Sorcerer's Stone, I don't want to, like, spoil the movie or anything, but, um, Dobby does a lot of, like, mischief, mischievous things, um, that's kind of annoying, but then it's, like, he still does some stuff, like, early on in the school year to Harry, that he's trying to get Harry to like really leave and like ruin his time. At least he does, there's like one instance where he does this early on in the movie, but then after that, he doesn't do it again. And it's kind of like, okay, then what was the, why'd you even do that? I can understand him preventing him from getting to school, but it's like, okay, you're gonna show him doing one thing at the beginning of school, but nothing else. Um, it's just kind of like one of those things, again, they probably could have cut out of a movie. I, the bludger, though, is really cool. So I guess I sort of spoiled what Dobby does in a way. But, um, I mean, you find out right after the sequence happens anyway, um, like, what he was doing. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this movie I think that is really intriguing to watch. This is a movie that's, I think, gotten better as I've gotten older. Because the mystery in this movie, it's a lot better than Sorcerer's Stone, I think, as far as, like, the the plot and the story um sorcerer stone like i said the first like the majority of the movie is just world building so it doesn't really have a lot of replay value chamber of secrets i think has more replay value because when you rewatch the chamber of secrets you catch things in the chamber of secrets like early on but you didn't catch maybe in the first viewing just because there's so much going on um and you are kind of trying to piece the parts of the puzzle together there's certain things in chamber of secrets though that like they try to like hint to the audience like oh this is an important thing and then again they just like either completely forget about it or it was never important to begin with like if we gave a movie like filch for instance like a janitor or whatever he drops like a letter like on the ground and harry picks it up and kind of reads it. he's like oh you dropped this and he's acting like it's a big deal they never reference that again like the rest of the movie they never bring it up at all 
Um, Kenneth Branagh is in the movie. He plays the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher in this movie, uh, Gilgaroy Lockhart. Um, he's just really funny in this movie, I think. He's just such a silly character. I think out of all the Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers, he's like the uh, silliest one in all these movies. I mean, Coral is really the most forgettable one, because that's the thing about the Harry Potter movies. There's a different Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher in every single Harry Potter movie. Uh, and Coral, because he's the first one, Coral, and he's just like the most forgettable one, and I think uh, Sorcerer's Stone. Because Gilroy Lockhart, he's definitely memorable in this movie. Like, even when you rewatch it, you're like, he actually also, I think, gets funnier upon rewatch. Um, and Kenneth Branagh does a really good job as playing Gilroy Lockhart. Some other characters they introduced in this movie, like Moaning Martle, really annoying. Never was a fan of Moaning Martle. Even as a kid, I just found her really annoying. Um, Hermione isn't a new character, but I think Hermione's character is a lot stronger in this movie than the Sorcerer's Stone. And I think that they do a good job of adding layers to her character in this movie with like, um, you learn again, her parents are muggles and you learn how that makes her feel. And it really adds some, um, they add some layers to Hermione and they make Hermione more interesting in this movie. Um, not that she wasn't interesting in the first movie, but this movie, she's a lot more interesting, I think. Um, Ron, again, is just comic relief in this movie. Uh, Harry, you know, is pretty much the same as he was in the last movie. Um, you know, he's a little bit more, like, used to the wizarding world now. But there's some cool things they introduced in the movie, like flying cars, the Whomping Willows introduced in this movie, the huge, like, tree thing outside of Hogwarts that just destroys shit. Um, they also introduced, uh, this is the first time you see Dumbledore's office, which they'll show in the rest of the movies, but Dumbledore's office is like a really cool, like just setting and how they do it. Um, but there's just, there's a lot of things in this movie that like, I guess they're trying to keep the audience guessing the entire time. They hint that like Harry's the villain at one point. And I, I found this really silly on rewatch. I even found this silly the first time I saw the movie. I'm like, he's the, literally the main character. He's not the villain, especially like, it's only the second <laughs> film. I mean, it's only the second story, um, but it does add some kind of intrigue in here. Like, is Harry maybe behind it? Why, like, you kind of, it kind of makes you feel for Harry a little bit more because it's like, oh, all these people are against Harry now, and now he feels alone, he feels isolated. Even though he's this celebrity, they think he's pulling the strings um, with this whole Chamber of Secrets scheme. Um, I think the CGI in this movie looks really good compared to Sorcerer's Stone. I think it's aged better than Sorcerer's Stone. Like, the sequences with the flying car look really good, honestly. Like, for 2002, it still holds up. Um, I think they did a mix of CGI and animatronics for like the spiders and for the uh, monster at the end of the movie, but they both still look really good. Like for real, like they honestly look really solid. Even the Phoenix looks really solid. He's totally CGI. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, Chamber of Secrets isn't horrible. Um, I mean, I guess it might've sounded like I bitched about this movie a lot. I really don't mind this movie. Um, again, it's not my favorite Harry Potter movie. I think it's on the back nine for me. I think it has gotten better though. It's definitely not my least favorite anymore. Let me just make that clear. It's definitely not my least favorite. Um, it has some enjoyable moments. It has some stuff again, like once again, there's just so many things I think they could have really sliced it down a little bit in this movie. Like there's a really gross sequence um, with involving a bunch of spiders. Anyone who's seen Chamber of Secrets knows what I'm talking about. I mean, God, man, let me tell you about it. Like I, I never really liked spiders as a kid. I don't mind them anymore. But um, watching Chamber of Secrets, like the spiders in this movie, like it was like, ugh, God, it was nasty. Um, but I mean, again, that shows the effectiveness of how well it's aged as far as like the special effects and um, the sound editing and all that. Like it all really still works pretty well. Um, and the last like 30, 40 minutes of this movie are actually really entertaining. And you actually are pretty locked in because everything's kind of coming together and it's all building to one thing. And there's a really good twist at the end of this movie about who Tom Riddle is, which I'll spoil in the later reviews. But again, if you haven't seen Chamber of Secrets, watch Chamber of Secrets. Um, because again, I mean, even though it's a very long movie, I think Chamber of Secrets is a, an important Harry Potter movie to watch because um, you learn a lot of, there's a lot of small things that happen in Chamber of Secrets that become important later on in the film or in the series, I mean. Um, but yeah, overall, Chamber of Secrets is a decent movie. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think it's as iconic as Sorcerer's Stone. It also, there's a lot of things that it kind of blend, like it, the tone is very similar to Sorcerer's Stone. 
um, as far as like the direction of a film and as far as like the look of the film, which is kind of um, slightly impressive, but also slightly disappointing. Um, Cause the Chamber of Secrets is a darker story than the Sorcerer's Stone. Like I said, people get petrified, which means they're like super close to death. Um, it basically means in a wizarding world to get into a coma. Um, and there's a huge monster in the school, there's blood on the walls. I mean, there are elements that are, it, like clearly as far as the story goes, it's a lot darker. I mean, Harry hears voices in his head in this movie. Um, he turns into Randy Orton, I guess. Um, he can he t talks to snakes more in this movie. So then you learn about the parcel tongue stuff. Um, so I, yeah, real ner really nerding out in this review, <laughs> but I mean, overall, uh, Chamber of Secrets, I think, is a decent movie. I mean, it's definitely a movie that you need to see to understand future things in the Harry Potter uh, series, but it is way too long. It definitely shouldn't be the longest Harry Potter movie. I think they could have cut like 20 minutes out of this movie, and the movie would be um, a little bit more solid, a little bit more perfect. It just seems to kind of drag um, a at a lot of different points throughout. But again, we live in a streaming service world, so you can pause a movie, come back to it. I just feel like sitting through the whole thing in one viewing uh, would be really difficult because the pacing isn't really that great. Um, so overall, yeah, that's my review of the uh, Chamber of Secrets. So uh, um, did you like the Chamber of Secrets? Did you enjoy it? Have you liked and subscribed to my channel? Or I guess liked the video, subscribed to the channel. That's what you got to do now, right? Um, okay, the Callahan, Hall yeah, Callahan's Corner reviews are going to keep coming. Stay tuned for the next review. Uh, that will be The Prisoner of Azkaban. All right, peace.